ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम यू वी हैव बीन गोइंग थ्रू द बायोग्राफी ऑफ आवर मोस्ट बिलोड भगवान इट इज नॉट सिंपली नैरेटिव एंड मेयरली डिस्क्रिप्टिव दिस एक्सरसाइज इज टेकन अप विथ ए गुड इंटेंशन दैट वी शुड ड्रॉ लेसन्स फ्रॉम हिज लाइफ एंड लर्न टू इम्प्रूव the quality of our life that is the purpose of avatar it is in this line with this goal we started the study of the biography of bhagwan baba well after undergoing through ordeal torture harassment by everybody finally baba seemed to have determined to be congenial and cooperative and isarama and subama were allowed to feed him with the delicacies to their full delight one day someone from pinagonda probably at the insistence of the lately provoked keshavaya came to the raju home having heard our raju adash's claim that he was the sai baba of shirdi he threw out a challenge with a glaring eye we know who you are you are just a small boy the son of venkamarazu and isharma but if you are the same sai baba the sub registrar worships let us have the proof now hearing the unknown voice ringing arrogantly through the house isharma emerged from the inner apartments i shall give you the proof said razu unruffled he asked that flowers be brought to him the man asked isharma herself to bring them and he, she did so with trepidation in a quick gesture flung them on the floor there that is who i am they all saw the petals arrange themselves to form telugu words sai baba well the tongues stopped wagging keshavaya later visited puttaparthi staying for four days and participating in bhajans before he left he said you will be greater than me great things will happen the whole world will come to you you will have indra vaibhava rulers and angels will come to your feet raju offered vibhuti and he accepted it about this time isharma chose to reveal a past vision to subama in it raju appeared before her as an old bearded man then she remembered the old times when raju as a little boy spoke of an old fakir who used to feed him rotis those puzzling events now took on a mysterious dimension revealing a connection that was to clarify itself in the years to come subama instinctively grasped the situation and told the anxious isharma not to let her son pranks mislead her after all she counseled was not krishna also equally mischievous calling himself hari at one time and gopala at another both whom women were relieved that raj was active again though he did not associate with his companions he would walk to the hills alone and sit in silence on the rocks for hours at a time subama constantly scouted around for him in his favorite spots on the banks of chitravati to feed him with her hands at another time raju would leave the house at night and wander about aimlessly one day when his sister venkamarazu called raju to her home his childhood friends tunga gangappa kamsali venkappa and vasi narayana also accompanied him raju went and lay down on the bed she asked his friends to keep an eye on raju while she went next door during their brief stay raju suddenly started to get up on his own when they tried to restrain him from doing so he threw them away 
jointly, they forced him to be in bed. He fell asleep, and upon walking a short time later, he recognized the three friends and asked him, When did you come? We were having bhajans. Were we not having them? We'll have bhajans again. Tomorrow you should all come. While singing bhajans, he would leave abruptly and walk away anywhere he liked. The local villagers started calling him a crazy boy. Raju would say, I'm not crazy. All of you are crazy. The practice of Shirdi worship was becoming common in Puttaparthi. Raju's uncles, Venkat Ramarazu, Venkata Subba Raju, were worshippers of Sai Baba of Shirdi long before Raju announced himself as being that Sai Baba. Venkata Subba Raju brought a Shirdi Baba portrait and started offering worship before it. During the worship, Raju used to sit behind him and on many occasions would fall into a trance. Venkata Subba Raju often read aloud the biography of Sai Baba. Whenever he erred by reading, Raju would point out the mistake and explain where the mistake was, including page number, stanza or line. Raju would sit on a deer skin before Sai Baba portrait and spend time alone without talking, eating or doing anything. One day, many youngsters wanted to test Raju and know the reasons for his inordinate behavior. So they went and asked him, What, Satchinayana? Why do you not eat or drink anything? What has happened to you? Raju told them, You are all mad boys. Saying so, he moved his hand on the deer skin, materialized a four and a coin, a n and a, meaning equal to 25 paisa today, four and a kind, and gave it to them. They were surprised. They took it and brought coconuts and incessant sticks for two annas, returning to the room where Raju sat, breaking the coconut before him. Raju asked them, Why have you brought all this? I give it for your personal use. So, no, don't do that. So, you buy some eatables. All of them then realized that Raju had some powers which made them more curious than ever. They wanted to test him further and decided to take him to Chitravati Sands. Once there Raju said, Tell me what you want. They all demanded that Raju give them sugar candy, sweets and many other things. One after the other, he gave them all that they wanted. He circled his hand in the air and manifested for them vibhuti. From then onwards, they would visit him daily. After a few days, they took Raju to the local Gangamma temple. It was a season for the mangoes, and one boy in the group asked for a mango. Raju said, There is a mango on the tamarind tree. Go and get it. Raju insisted upon waiting at the Gangamma temple. The boy went up the hill and found a mango hanging to the branch of the tamarind tree. See this. He brought the mango back to Raju, who cut it and distributed pieces to all. The great power latent in Raju had finally taken over. A new persona of Raju was beginning to emerge. But the body still had to go through tremendous trauma. Years later, when devotees would ask him why he had to undergo so much suffering and in complete silence, Raju as Sai Baba was to say, People then were not prepared to know me. Besides, I want to teach humanity the noble ideals of patience, acceptance and love and put before others a good example. I had to tell them by and by who I am. Shashama Raju, however, was very critical of Raju's utterances. One Thursday, he noticed Vibhuti appearing mysteriously on Raju's half-brow. 
where a seat was provided for Razu to sit on, Shesham Razu saw that the wooden plank moved on its own, settling at Razu's feet. He saw other inexplicable happenings like lime fruit appearing out of the blue, jasmine flowers, and nibudi, and a rupee note moving up the wall and disappearing. Every Thursday he would go into a trance. Seshamaraj carefully watched every miracle as well as every unusual occurrence. He often verified Raju's predictions. Soon he was satisfied and thoroughly convinced that there was no pretense of any sort. His brother most definitely had some powers, even though he had not performed any austerities, gone to a guru, or taken upadesha, or done any sadhana. That is important. So the elder brother began to be certain that Raju was different and wondered whether the great soul of Shirdi Sai Baba had taken possession of his brother's body after the near fatal scorpion bite. He was no longer the same Satyam. He continued to recite great poetry and go into trance, provide counsel or make predictions. He gave blessings to people who came to him. Soon Sashamaraju returned to the world of mankind as he had to resume his teaching assignment at Oravakonda. When school reopened after the summer holidays, he decided that Razu should go with him and attend school. He was worried about Razu's future, for how could Razu continue living in the village, doing nothing and without an education or a job? He was also confident that Oravakonda would soon clear Razu's fanciful hallucinations. He insisted that Razu should be sent back to school and put to tasks that would be more useful. The parents relented and Razu was sent back with his brother. Isharama walked with them across Chitravati and waved them off only when the village Karnataka Nagepalli came into sight. Little did she know then that Razu was lost to her as a son. He now belonged to the entire world as its teacher. That's the story of Bhagwan for today. We can certainly understand how he could reveal his identity. One, by correcting his brother, who was going through Shirdi Sai Charitra. Wherever he committed a mistake, he could correct them. And we also have come to know how he materialized all the articles and fruits that his friends wanted from him. It's really unbelievable and good fortune of Vishwarama and also Subba Magaru to realize that Baba is Krishna himself, that they should not take it in a different sense. We'll meet again later.